Well, thank you for being here tonight. And, um, you know, one of the things that I think we're all worried about is the state of the country. Whether you're a Republican or whether you're a Democrat, I think all of us have a, a worry that hangs over our head. January 2014, Congress's approval rating was 13 percent. Could you imagine if Tallahassee Community College or any of the places we work had an approval rating of 13 percent? Or if, the, or if whoever you work for thought that you were only doing that good of a job, you'd be out of a job. But, but here's the thing. I am a politician. I'm an elected official. And I'm proud of it. And if I don't work in Congress, that's not my, my area. I'm a state elected official. And here's, here's the other thing. When uh, it was reported in major media outlets all over the country that 49% of Americans, by this uh, uh, measure, 2,500 people were tested and they came up as failing to know about their American history, failing to know about their Constitution, failing to know about their Declaration of Independence. But what they did know was that Paula Abdul was a judge on American Idol, okay? So these are the kinds of things that, that we need to know about and we need to take in. In 2012, a presidential election, and presidential elections bring out a lot of folks, 91 million Americans that were eligible to vote voted. Out of 222 million that were eligible, so one out of two Americans that were eligible to vote voted. What if only one out of two people showed up at your workplace? M the message I'm here to bring today is you get the government you deserve. You get the government you deserve. And I'm going to tell you where I learned that from. I, you know, when I was thinking about talking to you tonight and thinking about what to say, I, I often uh, look to my grandparents. And they're dead and gone. They are buried. Uh, but they talk to me quite frequently, and I keep their spirit very close to me. And uh, my grandfather, Nick, spoke up, and he said, he said, you know, tell them about when you were in fourth grade. Tell them about when you became inspired to become part of the government and that you would be proud to do that someday. And I'll tell you about this. My grandfather, Nick, had arms like Popeye. He was what one would call a burly fellow. He had a deep, husky voice, didn't speak much, but when he spoke, it was people listened. When he walked into a room, he had presence. And I loved him, and he loved me, and we were uh, together quite frequently. And he picked me up from um, uh, fourth grade uh, the day before Thanksgiving and said, Michelle, what did you learn in school today? And I said, I'm learning about the founders. I'm learning about the dec uh, Declaration of Independence and this, the Revolutionary War. And he said, that's really good. Pay attention. And he said, because the founders of this country were kissed by God. And by golly, after Thanksgiving, I came back and I did pay attention. And I was an only child and I was a voracious reader and I read everything I could about the founders of the country, about the Revolutionary War, about how our country was founded. And I got steeped in that uh, just by the desire to, and the passion to want to do that. And yes, I was very patriotic. And um, uh, so fast forward a few years, and um, my grandparents had retired to Florida. And I had ended up actually uh, going to school in the community in which they retired. And we kept up a very close relationship. And uh, on voting day, when I was 18, uh, they, my grandfather said, come on over for breakfast and we'll go together. And so we had breakfast, we talked about who to vote for, how, you know, all, and he didn't tell me he wasn't that kind of a guy. He just made it a day. He made it a day that was very special. And we went to vote together, my grandfather and my grandmother and I. And when we came back home, we had coffee and we talked about it. And uh, it brings tears to my eyes because it was very special. And I wish every young person would have that. And as long as I was in college and was in that community, we went together to vote. That's what we did. And so that was the lesson that he gave me. 
But he also talked about the grandfather that died, my mother's father. And that grandfather died in World War II. He was a doctor, a graduate of Harvard Medical School, very different from Nick. His name was Joe. And he had a booming practice, four uh, children and a wife. And he was an immigrant, an Italian immigrant. And he had decided when World War II broke out that this country had given him so much and his siblings so much that he would volunteer to go to, uh, to war and to be a doctor and sew uh, sailors up. He joined the Navy, he became a commander. Um, and so he left his life there. He came home in a casket. And so Nick told me about Joe and said, this country is worth fighting for. I didn't fight, he said, because he, he was older at that time and he had a plating shop and he actually ended up plating uh, uh, pieces of, um, on the, the carriers, on the, um, the aircraft carriers. And so he did his bit for the war too. He actually moved his family from upstate New York to South Carolina and he actually won an award for creating a plating process that kept things stronger on the, on the, the, uh, the planes as they landed on the carrier. And he gave that award back, the money that he won, uh, to much my grandmother's dismay. But both those men taught me. One di had died, one was alive, one talked about the other, that this country is worth fighting for and that is, this country is worth knowing about. And you know, they say American exceptionalism is dead. No, it isn't. We have got to bring it back. We have got to stop the partisanship, partisanship uh, and this kind of um, uh, very, very ugly discourse that we see very often on TV. I know very often we're disgusted by it. You watch what's going on on television with the pundits and the news guys, and you say, gosh, well, I wish they'd stop arguing. And then you hear somebody like Ted Nugent, who is not a TED Talk guy, and the ugliness that comes out of his mouth. And I think to myself, where's his mom? <laughs> Where, what would his mom think of him? But the point is, the point is we've got to stop. We can't be so fascinated by that that we don't stop and think how to do things differently. And when coaches and military commanders and, and heads of families look at what, it, when, they're, when something's going wrong, very often they don't know that to fix it this way or that way or the other way, but they do know what to go back to basics. And what I'm saying is bring us back to basics, each one of you. Roll up your sleeves, because what it says in the United States Constitution is we the people, we the people, all of us. It's not some government that came from Mars. We have not been invaded. It is us. Your neighbors and friends are elected officials. Your neighbors and friends work for state government. Your neighbors and friends work for the city government, the city, the county commission, the Congress, even Congress. And our president was somebody's neighbor and friend and, and hopefully still is. We have got to stop talking about the government as if it isn't us, because it is us. And you need to go and vote and register to vote and take that seriously. It's your job. We talk about duties and rights, but we, don't, we talk more about rights than we do about duties. Who's got a right to do this? Who's got a right to do that? Who's got the freedom to do this? Who's got the freedom to do that? But what about the responsibility that goes with that freedom? What about the duty that goes with that right? And that duty is to preserve the rights that you have and to do it by voting, by speaking to your government and speaking to your elected officials I bet you if I asked how many people have actually gone and, and to a town hall meeting or who have written a letter to their um, elected official on either one of the levels, whether it's federal, state, or local, I'll bet you how many people have done that, how many people have written a letter. Th that's good. How many people have called? How many people have, how many people have called? Go ahead. How many people have dropped by to visit? How many people have gone to a town hall meeting? And so those are the kinds of things that we need to do. And I, I, I titled this talk, Wanted, Lobbyists for Common Sense, 
because you also hear about the money in the system and that there are lobbyists in the system that, that, that put a lot of money in front of politicians. Nature abhors a vacuum. You be there instead. You be there to talk to us, to tell us what we need to know. You be there to, to make the Constitution that says we the people come true and that the things that our soldiers fight for, the things that you need to fight for is the Constitution of the United States and the Declaration of Independence. And I ask you to go and read that at some point in time within the next week. Just take a look at it. It's on the Internet. Take a look at it. See what birthright you have and what's worth fighting for, what's worth voting and talking and being part of a civil discourse, a courteous exchange of ideas. So thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for listening to me. And I hope that I've enlightened you. You know, Thomas Jefferson said, enlighten the people generally, and oppressions of mind and body and spirit will vanish like evil spirits at the dawn of day. And I hope that I've done a little bit of that today. God bless you. God bless America.